we were told that we're the youngest ever to send during wartime. We were mostly between 21 and 25. Say this, every day was surreal. Every day was a different day. Every day was surreal. Some days were like a hallucination, especially at night. The worst things happened at night. The most, the patients, there was a lot of fear at night because it seemed like Charlie, when they were going to rocket and mortar and attack us, it was at night. I used to say everything bad happened at night. I remember a young boy, he was a farm boy, and I'm from Iowa, so I, you know, knew about farm boys, and he had lost his arm. And one night, he, was, he just, he was crying, and I'm like, what's the matter? He said, I don't think my girlfriend will love me when I go back without an arm. The other one was a captain who lost his leg, and he was the only one that survived the battle. And so he lost all of his men, and he just kept saying, why am I here? Why am I here? They're all dead. And the thing about those two is that we never knew what happened to them. Just getting out of school, being a brand new nurse, and going to a naval hospital in New York City, a very busy hospital uh, during the Vietnam, and, and taking care of horribly wounded people. The images of those um, young men will be forever with me couldn't express your emotions. You had to just keep pushing everything down because you couldn't cry in front of the patients. And it was just such awful wounds and awful conditions that the patients were in, the Marines. But yet we just had to keep doing our job. One of the patients on the ICU was critically injured and um, passed away. And the other, one of the other nurses and I were just having nightmares about it. We just couldn't get over this one Marine's death. So we actually wrote to his parents and said that he had died with us holding his hand and he was surrounded by nurses who cared about him when he died. It just, it, there's things that don't leave you after you leave the war zone. You leave the war zone behind you, but it still goes home with you. I've been coming here since 82, and for me, because I'm the founder of the Vietnam Women's Memorial, the greatest joy for me, it's, it, it is, it's just pure joy. It's, seeing these other women and how much the memorial means to them because that's what it was for. It was for them. It was to help them heal. It was to bring us together. I don't think in all the 25 years I've been coming here now that I have received more thank yous than this weekend. They just, uh, they're more emotional. They're more willing to, I think, share their stories, open up, but they come up to me and say, thank you. I didn't know I needed this memorial and now I know I needed it. So when I see the tears and the joy and the happiness of the Red Cross women, the journalists, all the women, not just the nurses, saying thank you for this memorial, I did what I set out to do. And it was hard work. It was 10 years. It wasn't easy. But I look back and I say now, it was worth it. We were worth it. They were worth it. They deserve this.